Hello folks, I hope that you're having just a great and safe day today. Hey, today I want to take a look and, and do a little bit of a sort of an examination for you. I want to take a look at black writers during the pulp era um, and take a look at some of the things that black writers were writing during the pulp era. Um, since this, this channel tends to focus on science fiction, fantasy, and horror, it's going to specifically look at those sorts of, of stories. Um, who was out there writing them, what was being written, and those sorts of things. Obviously in America this is the first generation after slavery, so there's uh, a lot of uh, discrimination that's happening. Um, we're in the middle of, of, of the segregation movement, uh, where we are after Plessy versus Ferguson, and we have that separate but equal sort of idea. It's difficult to live in that post-slavery world. Um, it's also the era of the Harlem Renaissance, uh, where you have Langston Hughes and other black writers who are writing uh, with a strong voice. One of the major things that's happening during this era is there's kind of basically two major sort of uh, ideas before how black people should be living and engaging uh, themselves after uh, and, and dealing with the, their post-slavery era. The first is led by Booker T. Washington, and he has this idea of sort of reconciliation, working with the former slave owners, uh, the white people, the powers that be, in order to sort of re-ingratiate -ing yourselves in. Uh, Booker T. Washington was also hugely pro um, capitalism, uh, building up your, your your money through investment. He was definitely a big fan of that. He was somebody who had a lot of money as a result. The other one uh, is, is the other major leader of, of, that, of this era is W.E.B. Du Bois, who felt that black people really needed to take care for take care of themselves. Um, they should be much more authentic with what they were doing and talking about. Um, you know, Booker T. Washington was sort of of the idea of, hey, we don't want to lose potential white allies by complaining about how bad it is, um, and that sort of thing. And talking about it, we don't want to, you know, you know, lose any potential. You know, we want to be very careful with how we sort of uh, demonstrate and emulate that sort of thing. And you also want to kind of, uh, whereas W. B. Du Bois was like, no, we they need to be told what real life is really like, um, and we need to watch out for ourselves. We need to be investing in ourselves. We need to be pushing ourselves and our own voice out there, um, and that head came to a head on Colored American Magazine, which was the first uh, magazine on culture uh, of black culture in America after the uh, Civil War ended. Um, and the person who ran that was was Pauline Tompkins. Now, this book by Pauline Tompkins is one of the first science fiction novels ever written. It's the first one I've ever found that was ever written by a black person. Um, this is ironic. This is this novel of One Blood. Um, was actually, it's the first novel ever written that star, that's written by a black person starring black people and set in Africa. Um, and Pauline Tompkins herself was the founder and editor of Colored American Magazine. And, and in Colored American Magazine, you can see the Booker T. Washington and the W.E.B. Du Bois, sort of two different storylines, kind of coalesce because there were, there were white people who read Colored American Magazine, the first magazine for black people. Uh, Pauline Tompkins was more in the W.B. Du Bois camp. She would talk about what life was really actually like. Uh, her stories tended to have a strong romance component, so they would add in aspects that you could have characters that you could believe in. Uh, and then she would also challenge white readers about what it was like to live black um, and also speak for, on, 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 with black voices that were being published in this magazine, talking about what it's actually like to live in America as a black person. Um, and that was Colored American Magazine. Now, um, it initially was founded by Pauline Tompkins, and she was actually one of its editors uh, in the early stages of its day, as well as the, the most published writer in it, too. Um, and again, during that early era, it was definitely more of a W.E.B. Du Bois sort of thing. But then in 2005, there was a hostile takeover led by Booker T. Washington, who led a, a, a hostile takeover, and they swapped editors, brought in a different editor who's much more about just trying to show off the great stories of, of black people in America that white people could sink their teeth into and say, oh, aren't black people living better after slavery? No, they'd be more willing to invest money in black people and black causes. They'd buy black magazines, right? The black people that would be running them would make more money, right? Uh, and so forth. So he wanted to highlight the positive aspects of the post-slavery community as a way to celebrate the victories that they've been doing together as a community, um, as well as to bring white people into that conversation. And that's, that's what wound up happening uh, with the magazine after that, after this new editor uh, was brought in. So Colored American Magazine can be seen 
as a literal, as uh, a symbol of, of the battle between sort of the two views of black writers in America. Now, most black writers during this time, and there were a lot of them, uh, who were writing um, tended to be uh, writing things that were not genre fiction. They were writing things like poetry, uh, normal stories, uh, a fiction, uh, uh, and non-fiction as well, telling stories about their community. Uh, and so there weren't as many of them writing about genre fictions. Pauline Tompkins, who's, 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 who's uh, wrote her story, um, it's set in Africa. Um, it is a typical sort of story in that dark continent exploration, except it's not dark in this context. Um, but it has that sort of an aspect to it, as well as some science fiction aspects to it. It's a genre novel. Um, other writers who wrote other things will have their things too in it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review for you of W.E.B. Du Bois, The Comet. I'm going to be reading that here in a little bit. I'm going to be really enjoying looking forward to that. Um, there's also this um, collection called Dark Matter um, that I'm going to be taking a look at, and it collects uh, genre fiction in, in the uh, speculative fiction genre, uh, which includes horror science fiction and fantasy by black writers. Now, this collection itself um, has stuff from the early 1900s all the way to the late 1900s, but it's about 450 pages long, um, and so it's, it's in chronological order. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be reading this, uh, and I'll be anything in here that I find interesting. I'm going to be bringing to you over the next little bit. Uh, but there you are. There you have it. I want to take a quick look and talk a little bit about what it was like to write as a black person. The two major sort of views between uh, uh, in, in the black community, um, and how you can see that specifically in Colored American Magazine with Pauline Tompkins. Uh, I'm sorry, Pauline Hopkins. <laughs> Uh, who is the editor of that uh, for you. So there you are. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed this sort of deep dive into, um, you know, sort of history of the, of the, of the three genres I care about, uh, or black history or something like that, uh, I'm happy to do something more like this with you. Let me know. Feel free to hit me up in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more of these to follow. And finally, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We all have so many things happening in our lives in so many places that, that we need to go and do. Uh, so the fact that you spent this time with me is very humbling, and I really do appreciate that. So thanks again. Have a good one.